G'day guys, how are we going? Well, we're back again. Back again having a yarn of you guys another Wednesday night. Give us a thumbs up. Let us know that this is all coming through uh, pretty loud and clear. Uh, a few of you on already, which is good. Greg, Leanne, thanks so much guys there coming in there tonight. So tonight's topic is going to be about uh, the battery isolator switch on your winch. So we're going to have a good chat about that and and the sort of the role that those sort of switches play as we go forward. But we'll get into that as we're going on. Um, so, yeah, if you just tuning in tonight for the first time, uh, Tim Bates is my name. YouTube channel is Tim Bates 4WD Adventures. I film all my trips and, and those sort of things as I go along, follow like tips and hints and that sort of stuff. So some pretty cool stuff going on there in the channel. If you want to check that out, it'll be ace. And I uh, appreciate any feedback. So let us know as we're going on. Let us know where you're coming in from. Looks like it's all coming in. Pretty loud and clear. G'day, Greg and Joe, and good on you guys. Turn guys, um, oh, thanks so much there for coming tonight. So, this little gadget here. How many of you guys actually know what that is, and what do you do with it? Um, you know, isolator switch key. How many of you guys got one of these sitting under your bonnet there, Greg? Coming from Frankston's all good. Good that's coming all loud and clear. So, one of these, they're pretty important little uh, little gadget. Um, just a bit of plastic, but geez, it plays a pretty important role when it comes to um, isolating and getting the power going to your winch. But you no, know, look, you can use them for other things as well. You don't have to just use it for you know isolating your your winch, the power to your winch. You can you know turn power off and on to any other accessories you know you want to set up. If you're you know pretty electrical minded, you can set up all sorts of stuff going there. But as far as the winch goes, this is a really important item to have under your bonnet. Um, where you can turn the power off to your winch um, when your vehicle's not being used and, um, and then, you know, if your car's parked out in the street and that sort of stuff, it certainly stops people from potentially tampering your winch, winch and doing some, yeah, pretty pretty hard stuff with, with your vehicle and your winch. But, you know, but without that, if you haven't got, you know, that turned on, so you just put it in the little isolated little housing there that's under the bonnet, turn it on, and then that activates the power. But if you don't have that, well, none of this is going to work. So that's not going to work. And you can plug this in all you like, and unless your power's turned on with this little gadget here, well, this isn't going to do much for your winch either. So th these are certainly a great item to have. There's, there's no doubt about that as far as, you know, the, that it you know, can turn the power off and on to your winch, but be pretty keen to know how many of you guys have actually got one and you actually know what these guys do. Um, G'day, Greg, you've got, got two two for your winch. There you go, so you've got one going on there. Uh, great job as always, mate. Thanks so much, Scotty, for coming in there tonight. Uh, Luke uh, camped out near Junction Hut over the week, long weekend, Aberfeldy River. It was flowing pretty hard, I think. All the rivers are going to be flowing pretty hard at the moment. That is for sure. A um, fair bit of rain's gone on the last sort of week or so, so they're all going to be fairly well up. There's no doubt about that, but it's greater area at the back of Wahala there. Um, but these little keys here, um, you know, and, and the thing with this, what, I've, what I do with mine, I put this in, you know, I activate my winch regardless every time when I go out full driving because the last thing you want to do is if you just throw this, depends where you keep it, uh, you want to, well, if you do keep it in your vehicle, you want to make sure it's handy, you know where it is. Because um, if, you know, you, you get yourself in a situation where, you know, you're stuck on the side of a hill or you've got a bog, you get yourself out of a bog and and that sort of stuff, well, you then don't want to go, have to go ratting through your four drive to find out where that is. So then you can get your winch going. So always, guys, if you've got one of these, make sure you put it in, turn your winch on. Have it always powered up every time. If you're going out there in the bush, you just never know when you're just going to have to pull, pull a winch rope out to get either you out or your mates out or something like that. So always good to um, yeah have that going all the time because, as I say, unless that's turned on, well, none of those other accessories with your hand controllers and those sort of things are going to work in any of those, any of those times. So it would be good to know how many guys have got one. Uh, Leanne, you've got a carbon winch, and so have I, um, but not the isolated. Well, they do have the isolators that um, you can get them with the carbon winch. I'm probably sure you, know, you can probably get the isolator switch with pretty much all the winches, but carbon is certainly having because I've got one carbon winch under my under in my, front of my patrol and certainly got one of these little gadgets um, that uh, isolate that, that winch. So well worth certainly checking out because um, 
yeah, look, I um, sort of don't want to sort of talk about going about it too much, but you know, if you're a bit electrical minded, you can isolate the um, or mess around with the um, solenoids in, in your control box. And if the power's running to it all the time, if you haven't got one of these, if your power's running to it all the time, um, yeah, there's some horrid things that people can do to your full drive. They can crush your car and all sort of stuff with with winches and that sort of stuff too. So really well worth having one of these. And, and plus too, you know, if you're driving through a river or something like that and um, you get a short out through your solenoid, well, you know, you haven't got any power going through it, um, well then, you know, you're not going to have that problem if you have that turned off. But so we're certainly well worth worth, worth having a look at. Uh, Jeff, uh, I've I've mine attached to the remote lanyard, um, one of these. Got one of these, have you, mate? Yep, that's all good. Uh, and the glove box, try it and never get stuck. <laughs> thought, thought so. I uh, haven't used so I haven't used it yet. Well, we all say that about patrols and Toyotas, mate. They never get stuck. Well, actually, I've never had to really use mine in in, uh, in too many aggressive situations just yet. But um, so the old patrol goes right too. But yeah, so it's probably a good idea. Maybe keep them together so you know where they are and. But that's why, you know, if um, if you've got one of these, it's always better that you take control of it, you isolate your, your, your winch, get it all powered up before you go out because the last thing you want to do is go and get yourself, you know, stuck on the side of a hill somewhere and you can't get out of your full drive because, you know, you're stuck in a horrid situation and then you've got your mates now, they're going to help you out. Well, if your winch isn't fired up, ready to go, then they've got to start looking for this and if they don't know what it looks like or, you know, what they're looking for, that makes it even harder. Then they're plus. Then they've got to get under the bonnet and wherever your isolator switch is, and and get it all fired up. So it's so much better. As soon as you deflate your tyres, chuck that key in as well, just as part of your your routine, what you're doing before you you know when before you start doing the tracks, deflate your tyres, put your key in, get your winch activated, regardless on where you're going on, on what sort of tracks you're going to do. And then that takes that problem out of the, out of the scenario. So if anything goes wrong, you know your winch is going to work. Every, whenever you kind of need it, so um, be, yeah, pretty keen. Um, uh, Mark, there, um, never knew they existed. Well, it, it's funny you say that. Well, not funny, but you know, there's there's quite a few don't, and I've have been asked about isolated switches for quite a while, and and I only got a message only a couple of days ago about another guy who asked about you know isolated switches and this sort of stuff, and and I thought, well, let's have a chat about this with you guys on um, YouTube Live tonight. So this is where this topic's come from, uh, again, from the guy that uh, messaged me only a couple of days ago because, um, as I say, a few people have asked about these and um, certainly well worth getting on your full drive under your bonnet there if you, if you haven't got one. Uh, Luke, um, did you get out in the long weekend? No, I didn't. Didn't get out in the long weekend because I've actually finished the patrol now, so um, uh, that's why I didn't sort of get out. Uh, I was doing the last couple of little final zip ties and stuff like that to it. Um, I've actually filmed it all now, so the video will be up for it next Monday night as part one. Um, so, yes, yeah, so it'll be up next Monday night. So we'll show you all the layout and what's going on and the big changes. Fantastic it is, I've got to tell you. Uh, Troy there, definitely definitely have one. That's good, mate. Good thing you've, uh, you've got one there, mate, because they certainly are a good thing to certainly have. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Josh, can you flick um, can you flick manpower on with a switch in the cab? Um, the main power on with a switch in the cab. I can't with mine. Or you, you can get so you you can't even you know take away even that. You know you can get you know switches in in your in right in your, in your driver's seat there. So you can even operate that sort of things. You, know, you can operate your rope in and out from from the driver's seat. Um, so there's something else you, you know you can look at too, but. Um, but again, without that engaged, well, you're not going to get any power going through to your winch going forward. So you need to look at that sort of stuff also. G'day, Mark. How are you going there, mate? Thanks very much there coming in tonight. Um, G'day, Luke. Uh, look forward to uh, ready for the next trip. Uh, look forward to seeing it. Yeah, looks, it's pretty good, mate. It's um, it's a very simple setup, but Jesus, it's great. It's it's fantastic. I, I really like it, and it's going to suit me, no doubt, going forward. That's for sure. Uh, Glenn, how much uh, how much weight have you saved on the patrol? Um, in the end, uh, once the gear's gone back in it, I've dropped uh, what have I dropped? I dropped 100, 180 kgs, one hundred and seventy kgs. 
So that, that's a fair whack of weight out of it, but I've got a couple more items that I'm sort of tossing up at the moment that I still might remove off it yet. So we'll uh, we'll see see how things go at the moment because it's, it's pretty much smack on GVM at the moment. So um, we'll see how we go, but I've got some ideas yet where I can still oh, I could still potentially pull another 100 out of it easy if I really, really, really wanted to, but we'll just see see what goes on with that going forward. Um Dave, how are you going there, mate? Um, got a got a fancy new isolated switch on the on the panel. Uh, I'll have to show it to you. Well, that, that's all good as long as you've got one, mate. That's that's the main thing that no one can go mucking around with your winch is is, is a good good thing. Go, okay, Richard. How are you going there, mate? All going well here. There's no doubt about that. All going pretty good. Uh, Iggy, uh, great show. Thanks very much, mate, for coming in there tonight. Uh, Max, 180 kgs. That's a lot of lot of beer cans you can carry. Well, it is, mate. Is um. Certainly, uh, get get a few few of that 180, but yeah, that's that's how much it's it's dropped at the moment. So once all the fridge and sort of camp gear has gone in, and I've really fine tuned it right down, and and that and that's going to be sort of the key with it all. But um, so we'll see see where it all goes. You know, they're going forward. Uh, Biggles, sorry a bit late, mate. That's all right. Better late than better late than never, mate. That's all good. Uh, Luke. Um, uh, yeah, that, that's that's the go. Nice and simple makes it easy in the bush. Well, it is, mate, and, and that's, you know, like I said, you know, when, when you see this set up next Monday night, if you tune in, um, it's not a setup for everyone, but you know what? It's a setup that suits me, and that's that's all that matters, you know, you, and that's the thing you got to do with any of your setups, you know, you, you got to set them up that's going to suit you, not anyone else, and and that's that's all, all that's, that's that's the main sort of key point with it all, you know, you just got to set them up to suit yourself. Uh, Terry and Tyron, I uh, noticed in, in the in the prior video you don't rush, uh, you don't you don't run bash plates under the video under under your vehicle. No, I don't, mate. I've never, I've never had bash plates. The only bash plate I've got under my patrol is that red diff cover. That's the only bash plate that I've sort of really got under there. I've no, I'm not a big fan of them, and as I said in that video, um, the one that you've obviously watched there, I'm not a big fan of bash plates. But that's just my take on it. Um, one, I, I'm a bit concerned about how much. Uh, airflow, they they, uh, they restrict going through, right through your vehicle there, particularly underneath there if things are getting hot. But the big one is um, how many people that have got bash plates, how many actually fair and can clean them out properly, you know, because they would catch a lot of mud and dirt and grime and crap on top of them. Um, so how many actually clean them out? You know, that's, that's the other thing too I, I sort of don't like about them. Um, so, yeah, so that's just my take on it, that um, bash plates, Right through my vehicles, one thing I, I will never own, plus the weight factor too. They're pretty heavy things. I, I've just got weight on <laughs> weight reduction, big time going on at the moment. Um, so yeah, as I say, there, there's some other stuff that potentially might happen yet. So just looking at those options. Uh, Edward, uh, would you would you get uh, would you get a Ute or a wagon for your next four drive? Uh, good question there, mate. Um, I've got the wagon now, and I had considered maybe chopping that into a, a, a four-door dual cab sort of a Ute style thing, but gone out of that, that idea as well. So I'm going to stick with with what I've got. But you know, I've got no no intentions in sort of short term, mate, of um, replacing what I've got. The patrol's fantastic; it's well set up to you know for what I do. And um, yeah, so I've got really no intentions at this stage on getting rid of it. Um, the old mighty ZD30, how good are they? <laughs> um, Edward, I've uh, got a bit of Edward. G'day, um, Boyd. How you going there, mate? All good. Uh, Richard, uh, just doing a three-litre patrol up. Please advise the best top mount intercooler. Well, I've got a, the HPD on mine. Um, if you want to have a chat with the guys down there at Digital Chance Road down there at Daniel, they've done all the work on mine, um, and they will certainly sort you out. But that's the one I've got on mine, big aftermarket cooler, bigger scoop. Um, it's got the fan underneath the whole whole shebang. Well, mine comes on. Uh, mine's all thermostatically controlled, so um, I don't have to flick any switches and that sort of stuff to activate the van. The fan it all comes on thermostatically, and uh, and it won't turn off until it gets to a certain temperature, generally around sort of that two hundred degree mark, uh, before that fan shuts down. And um, so yeah, it's, it's certainly a good setup, mate. So if you want to have a chat with them down there, they'll certainly sort you out. Uh, what about brewing? How are you going there, mate? I'm um, glad I checked uh, mine before I left on my last trip. Had to replace it the night before I left. What one of these gadgets? Because you you would hate to get out there. Imagine you know getting out there in the bush, um, you know, and and you and you've lost this key. Um, you'd be in a world of hurt. Feeding me if you're in a in a nasty nasty bog or on the side of a hill somewhere, 
and you've lost this key and you can't activate your winch, you're in, in a world of trouble. So I, I keep it in, in, in just in the, you know, one of the pockets in, in back of my car there, but I know exactly where it is. And, and as I say, you know, as I say, I, I always generally activate it before I head out anyway. But, you know, you could even just get a couple of zip ties and just zip tie that ring, you know, zip tie it really close to wherever your, um, your isolator switch is and then it's there all the time. Um, but I don't sort of recommend you know, leaving it in there, even though you've pushed in, because it, it is a bit of a push to get it in, you've got to turn it, it sort of locks in place, but you wouldn't want to leave it there, I don't think, unless you've got some sort of a, maybe a tie down, you know, a, a zip tie or something around it so it can't fall out, because if it comes out and you lose it, you're in a world of trouble, because your winch ain't going to work. Um, okay, Greg there, uh, wouldn't mind uh, a diff skid plate. Look, they have mine has been great, mate, and mine's been hit plenty of times. And I've seen um, the front diff bowls on a GU dented um, through hitting rocks. Uh, lucky enough, it wasn't dented enough where it hit the main cram wheel inside, but I've seen the front diff on a GU uh, with a dent in it through hitting a rock. So Mine has certainly been, you know, taken a fair bit of punishment, and because it's, you know, it's sort of curved and it goes sort of underneath the diff, it sort of acts as a bit of a bit of a skid plate too. So, um, and it sort of protects the uh, the bung as well, you know, your drain plug. So there's a bit going on with it. It's it's a good thing. Um, Scott, uh, please give a shout out to Steve Core with the big big patrol. Um, <laughs> you'll make this <laughs> make his day. G'day, Steve. How are you going there, mate? Um, hopefully everything's going all right though, out there, mate, with your big patrol. Uh, oh, my patrol. How good are they? Can't go too far wrong. Thanks very much for tuning in tonight, St uh, Scotty and Steve. Appreciate that, mate. Uh, Land Cruiser Toyota. Uh, thought I'd come in, come in late and see see the patrol's big reveal. <laughs> well, um, you've come in late, but there ain't no big reveal on, on tonight, mate. Um, so you're going to have to wait till Monday night this week at uh, well, 6.30 I'll hit YouTube and on the other social media pages I'll hit a bit later on. But 6.30 next Monday night, bang, it's going to be on. Um, so i just about finished the edit on that today. Uh, Christine, um, you can just uh, just undo the terminal and connect the, the second terminal and then just about without the, uh, the key. Well, if you... That switched on, we probably could if you really had to get yourself out of trouble. Um, but, you know, so, you know, you wouldn't want to be on a really horrible, you know, position where you really rely on that winch to get you out and then you go, go through all that sort of drama. So just better off, make sure you got that and this gadget here. Make sure you got it and, and don't lose it because it's a vital, vital piece. Bit of old plastic, but, geez, it does a great job. Um, Dave, how you going there, mate? Uh, can can you buy an isolated switch uh, at the key that fixes so, so you can't lose it? Um, I was just talking, actually talking to the guys today at Carbon Winch because that's the winch I've got on in mind, and they are looking into a potentially a new design set up for this. So just see what happens to that where it may not need to come out. But this one, look, this, as I say, this one does go in, and you got to you know you got to turn it, you got to push it down, and then turn it, and it won't come out. Like it's not just going to fall out. It um, it will stay in there, but I just don't like the idea of it staying in there unless you've got some sort of a you know a zip tie or something around, and then around a something you know to hold it there just in case it does fall out. So then it's always there. So if you got one of these, be able to secure it that way, or put it in somewhere in the back of your four drive there, where um you know where you're not going to lose it because it's you're buggered without it. Uh, Land Cruiser, um, been to the Blue Mountains. Um, how did you how did you rate it? I actually I've never been to the Blue Mountains, not full drive. I've sort of been through there, but I've never really been had a good look around the Blue Mountains, and they've been smashed pretty hard with the fires last year. So I'm not quite sure how they're looking there, but I've seen some recent videos, you know, sort of up around sort of Lithgow and that sort of area. So wouldn't mind maybe get up there at some stage. Um, now borders are starting to open up, which is a good thing. And um, go and check out some of those Lithgow areas. That would be probably all right, I reckon. Um, Bush Adventures. My last trip, uh, a mate, of, mate um, of mine's Hilux, unfortunately hit the side of a, a hit the side of the roof rack and damaged it quite badly. Knocked the jack off and the awning off, um, which is not great. Gee, that doesn't sound like a good situation that your mate was in with his Hilux. There, mate, he's obviously been right over on the side there. Um, done a bit, a bit of damage there. So hopefully, uh, hopefully, he got out of that okay and all going all right there. G'day, Jack. How you going there, mate? All good. Uh, Mark. Uh, you can you can buy a kill switch uh, with a key that won't come out. There you go. It's a simple isolator switch. Well, there you go, guys. You can buy a kill switch with a key that won't come out. 
Um, so there's, there's another option there. Um, if you're looking to get yourself into one of these where you don't have this sort of problem with your winch going forward. Um, Peter, how are you going there, mate? Did you buy the patrol from you? Absolutely, I did, mate. I've had it from day one. It's a one owner. Uh, 2009, March of uh, 2009, um, 8th of March, if you want to get fair about it. Um, yeah, 8th of March 2009 is when I bought the patrol, mate. Bought it brand spanking new and I've built it up from, from new from what it is today. And um, yeah, it's just a just a great thing, mate. I just really like it. Uh, big fella, uh, how are you going there, mate? That's good, uh, Glenn. Do you run steel? Don't run a steel roof rack or alloy? Well, funny you mention that. I have got an alloy rack on at the moment, but I'm about to uh, change that uh, with the guys from Trades and Roof Racks. That's who I've got on their on their rack now. So um, I'm about to change the roof rack on on uh, what's on it at the moment to one of their new styles. So check that out. There'll be a video on that in the next couple of weeks. Uh, well worth checking out. Uh, Land Cruiser. Um, I have a look at the guys who, who run the 79 series stuff. They run isolator inside the engine bay that's permanently, permanently there. Well, that's where mine is. Mine's under the bonnet too, you know, um, the isolator switch is under the bonnet there. So, you know, no one can no one can get to it, that's for sure, unless you're able to get in pop of the bonnet. But that's where mine is as well, mate, so it's certainly well worth it. Uh, Mark, nothing in the Blue Mountains is such as full driving. It starts out at Lithgow. Well, that's, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. You know, I've, I've seen a few videos just recent up around that sort of Lithgow area. And, um, yeah, it looks, looks like a pretty pretty nice area, some good good tracks, good scenery. Um, eventually uh, another maybe another year or two before the, the sort of the – Terrain comes back out there because it was absolutely smashed with the bushfires this year, but it'll certainly bounce back, no doubt about that. G'day, Shannon. How are you going there, mate? Uh, how's the thermo fan controlled? Thermo temp sensor. It, look, yeah, it is. It's all thermo, uh, thermostatically controlled. It's got a sensor on it, and uh, I can't tell you what temperature it kicks in at, um, but it, it I've, because I've got my EGT gauge there as well, and I generally, generally around that sort of 200 degree mark is sort of where it turns off, and that's sort of my number two. I, I don't sort of turn my patrol off until it gets below 200 degrees, and it's sort of generally around, around about there, but depends um, how hard it's been working too, so it sort of fluctuates a little bit. But um, the EGTs is, is the big one that I, I watch and I, I monitor mine. I won't turn it off until it gets below 200, whether the fan's run or not. But, um, but even if that fan's running, I still won't, I won't switch her off until at least that fan stops. That's the first thing that's got to stop. Fan on the intercooler's got to stop. Then I, then I uh, see what the uh, temperature is on the um, EGT gauge. If that's below 200, hit the key and turn her off. Um, G'day, Shannon. I um, know <clears throat> oh, there. Uh, Trent. Um, G'day, mate. How you going there? I uh, love, the, love the, uh, the open tracks, um, the high country, as soon as these restrictions lift. Uh, can't wait to get out and uh, help with the, with the trip plans here. Yeah, look, mate, they're, um, they're all like, well, the tracks are open now, a fair whack of them, but there's still a lot that are going to be cl- – still got extended closures on them, so you need to check if you're going to head out. Uh, a lot of tracks have still got extended closures on through the bushfires earlier on this year. Um, so you need to really have a good look about where you're going to go, particularly if you're talking about Davies Pony area and a few other areas like that because they have been hit pretty hard. Um, and they've got some ex- good extended closures going to be happening over there. Um, you know, patrol, uh, patrol Adventures, uh, Shannon, um, got the intercool HPD. Yeah, that's the one I've got there. It's yeah, so the same, same uh, intercool that I've got from South Australia. Uh, good mob. Um, Leanne, Peter, there's a video. Asked him to, to link to see hit you and, and naked before mods. Well, you might just see, see both of those. I'm not quite sure whether I'd use those quite those terms, but I am. But we'll go with that. Um, but yeah, there will be. Uh, there will certainly be the first video up uh, this Monday night with all the gear in it, so you get a good idea of how I've got it laid out. It's pretty cool, uh, big fella. Uh, Blue Mountains is all national park. Yeah, I thought probably um, probably is over the Blue Mountains. Pretty much all national park over that side. That's for sure. Um, Patrol Adventures uh, 50C um, is the surface temperature of, of Intercool. There you go. There's some uh, there's some interesting um, figures back there on sort of the temps on on the intercoolers and that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, look, mine's fantastic and um, absolutely love it. It works a treat. Um, you've ordered one for the TD42. There you go, ordered one for the TD42. Uh, Dave, how are you going there, mate? Um, ever thought about a turbo timer? So I can no. 
Um, turbo time is one thing I, I won't have. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm the turbo timer, <laughs> uh, human turbo timer. You need to look into turbo timers. Now, I'm sure it's probably going to, this might open a can of worms, but you need to uh, look into turbo timers because I know insurance, I'm pretty sure insurance companies aren't keen on them through the fact that you've got to um, get out, particularly with a manual, um, you've got to get out of your car, leave in neutral, um, out of gear with the engine still running. They're not keen on that idea at all. So if you've got a turbo timer or think about putting one on, have a chat with the insurance company to see how they feel about them because I think there are some potential issues, as I say, particularly with a manual vehicle, not so much with an auto because you throw it into park and at least it's, it's in park. But with the with the manual, you've got to leave it in gear and walk away with the engine running. So I'm not keen on that idea. So I'm the human turbo, turbo timer. And I turn it off when the uh, that temperature drops below that two hundred degree mark. So that's that's what I, I do, and I've been doing that pretty much from day dot. Uh, Mark uh, Parks did an update on closed tracks a few weeks ago. Yeah, look, there's been a few updates floating around. So yeah, if anyone's sort of after some information, jump on that Parks Victoria website. There are some good um, information on there for extended closures. Um, it's not a lot, but there are some areas. And as I say, you know, took that Davies Plain, um, Tom Grogan, uh, Mount Pinabar, all those sort of areas have been hit really hard and they aren't going to be open anytime soon. Um, so need, need to check out some of those. And even some of the areas going through Mansfield, um, you know, that King Billy track between Howard High Plain right through to sort of Lovick's. Um, that's that's got extended closures on it, so you need to just have a bit of walk. There's just some little pockets, you know, pockets of tracks that are that are still closed. Um, so you need to just check on those and and make sure you if you got a trip plan that um, you can get through. Because don't just assume because now tracks are open, everything's open because they aren't. There's um, there's a lot that is still shut. Um, <clears throat> Leanne, um, you meant meant the old the old video when you first bought the bought your Prado new. Um, well, there you go. That, the old video, <laughs> well, that was a while ago. Uh, Land Cruiser, uh, if you walk away from your vehicle locked while it's running, you can get booked. There you go. I, look, I always thought there was there was dramas that happened to, hit, happened to him in, in Mansfield. Um, and that's why I say, you know, not so much with an auto, but particularly with that manual. Um, it might be the same with the auto. I don't know whether yours is auto, mate, or not. But, um, yeah. And I definitely know, I'm pretty sure insurance companies aren't keen on turbo timers for that reason, just the fact you've got to walk away and leave it in neutral with, an, with a manual and the engine's still running. Not, not a good idea. You, know, you want to put, make sure your handbrake's well and truly on and, and uh, some of those Toyota handbrakes aren't flash. So you need to, um, yeah, have a good look at turbo timers if you're thinking about getting one. Uh, Glenn, any thoughts on the move um, to the battery chainsaw? Absolutely there is, mate. I've... Um, yeah, you know, I've still got my old petrol husky, mate, and it's been fantastic. Yeah, my petrol husky's over 25 year old and it's been a bloody great saw, you know. But um, battery stuff is just the the future. It's just the way going forward. There's no doubt about that. No fuels anymore. You don't need to carry fuels in your car. Again, you're going to cut down on weight. Um, as long as you've got charging options, as long as you've got good inverters in the back of your full drive, you're going to be able to charge your chainsaw batteries up. But, gee, some of, some of the videos I've, I've been watching on battery chainsaws nowadays, um, Fedic and they, they are damn good. You know, they're, they're cutting some serious, serious logs. And so, yeah, it's definitely the way to go. And, and like, even just in the last, I don't know, 12, 18 months, the, the battery chainsaw stuff, has exploded and, and the technology that's that's made it improve it's um it's definitely going forward so you know you put another another year or so on battery chainsaws and they'll be probably nearly as good as if not better than any petrol source so yeah def definitely looking at those going forward mate that's for sure uh scott uh love the billy t video mate um good to get back to basics here thanks mate for checking that one out look yeah look I, I always just love that simple life, mate. It absolutely works a treat um, with, with, when I go out in the bush out there. Absolutely love it. So it, it's a good thing. Uh, Peter, do you think uh, some of these tracks will remain closed forever? Um, I don't ever like to say forever, mate. And, not, you know, I know there's some other states that certainly have issues with permanent closures. And like New South Wales, I think it's pretty, been pretty hit hard with permanent closures. But... Um, our tracks seem to always open up again. You know, we didn't, don't seem to have that problem. And... Um, so, you know, it's just going to see how time goes down the track with that one, mate. But um, 
I, I think that, yeah, I think they'll, they'll come good as once the, the safety aspect's been taken out of it where, you know, any, any potentially dangerous burnt trees aren't sort of, you know, hanging precariously over tracks and stuff, they'll get removed and, and then tracks will get opened back up again. So we're just going to be a little bit patient on that one because, you know, these, these fires were Phoenix and massive and they've covered a massive area. Um, and, you know, and, and look, they, they the fires finished up in sort of March, sort of April sort of stuff and then, then the wet season's kicked in. So, you know, these guys haven't had a great deal of time over the winter to be getting out there checking this sort of stuff. So it's really just now where they're going to now sort of really get get stuck in and, and start inspecting some of these areas. So, you know, it's going to take a little bit of time. There's no doubt about that. So we'll see what happens down the track. But let's hope they, they all come back over again, mate. Uh, Bush Adventures, the um, uh, video, the Buckland Valley video, yeah, helped me uh, find some some snow and some good driving up to Mount Sierra. Look, that Buckland Valley's a great area, mate. Absolutely beautiful over there. I'd like to get back over there at some stage, and it is good for the snow, you know, that, that Buckland Valley area. Um, but the whole area there, you know, camp on the Buckland River, beautiful spot, well worth going to check it out if you haven't been over that side. And then, you know, Mount Buffalo, make sure you get up there and, and check out Mount Buffalo. Um that Mount Buffalo, I reckon, it's one of the most underrated mountains in the whole of the Victorian high country. There's no full driving to be done up there, but um, but as far as um, bushwalks and and uh, mountain waterfalls, oh mate, they are Phoenix, and they are as good as you're going to see pretty much anywhere, potentially pretty much anywhere in Australia, particularly over the winter season because it's not open all year round. Um, um, Mount Buffalo and the waterfalls that run off there when the when the when the rain's on, they are Phoenix and stunning. So. Make sure you check that out too, go on, going forward if you know that area. Uh, Mark, um, only only a game person would leave a Land Cruiser running in neutral. There you go, and walk away, yeah, and ever heard about the uh, the handbrakes there. Um, look, I found out how bad the handbrakes were on those two Land Cruisers from those um, recovery videos. I did, you know, the store, the store recovery videos. When you got to, you know, I pull the handbrake on, I'm sitting there just on the handbrake, and all these Toyota people are replying, you know, to those videos saying you couldn't do that in a Toyota. So that that goes to show, you know, how bad the the Toyota handbrake is. So yeah, do need to be careful. That's for sure. Uh, Greg, changing times is a problem. Well, yeah, it could be, mate. But we'll just have to see how that all pans out. Uh, Paul Boone, uh, the turbo timer thing has to do with the with the steering lock. Um, if it's got a steering lock, turbo timers are not allowed. Well, there you go. Um, well, pretty much most vehicles, most, pretty much nearly all vehicles these days would um, have certainly a steering lock. I know mine does, but, yeah, look, there, there are some a number of issues, and that's one I certainly heard of, hadn't heard of about, you know, uh, issues with the steering lock and that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, need, need to look into all that sort of stuff if you're going to get into turbo timers. Um just not and to, Land Cruiser Toyota, yeah, just nose it into the into the gutter. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I did on one of my um, one of my videos out of uh, out of Mansfield. There, one of the shots that I showed, I drive through a, one of the Cattleman Gates here, and as I've driven through, I've sort of edged the patrol and nosed into the into the bank, and the amount of replies that got, you know, just from doing that. And the, and the patrol handbrake, they are fair and they are great when they when they're um, tuned up nice, they're bloody good. But um, yeah, look, even just doing that, but Still, just get yourself a damn good handbrake, or it would is, is definitely the game. Right, eh? Well, um, well, that's been a pretty great chat with you guys tonight. And uh, the old battery isolator switch, you know, um, if you haven't got one of these on, on your winch, they're certainly well worth looking at getting one of these, and then no one can go mucking around with your winch. But for God's sake, don't ever lose it, <laughs> especially if you're out there in the bush, don't ever lose it because you're going to be in a world of trouble. Well, there you go, guys. Well, um, next week's topic, I've sort of got a bit of uh, next week sort of sorted out. It's going to be a bit of a, we're going to a bit of fun with next week's topic. And all I'm going to say is um, get the tomato sauce out. We'll leave it at that, eh? And uh, <laughs> we'll let your imagination run wild with that one. So there you go, guys. Thanks very much for coming tonight. It's great chat with you dudes there on a, on a Wednesday night. Uh, we look forward to the, these chats with you guys. Some great uh, feedback coming through there between the isolated switches and turbo timers and all the rest of it. Great feedback. Greatly appreciate it. So you guys have a great week and a top weekend. And view Melbourne people, um, midnight Sunday night, look out. It's going to be on. <laughs> we'll catch you guys next week. Have a ripper week. See you later, guys. Uber.